Something else you might have noticed is I'm not calling this, um, I'm not putting down this to show this is the x velocity or the x velocity or the x acceleration. Maybe you can see why I'm not saying that these are the x velocities anymore, because if I did, I would have three subscripts. Um, so I like subscripts, but even I don't really like writing three subscripts. So we're not going to call this v initial Alice x or v final Alice x. That would just be too many subscripts. It's pretty plain that we're doing a one-dimensional problem where we're only focusing on the x component. So there's really um, no need here to keep writing down x. Um, and by the same token, since I'm not going to write an x for the velocities, I'm not going to write an x for the acceleration. It's pretty plain that we're focusing on the x acceleration. This is a one-dimensional problem where we're only using an x-axis. So um, that's one thing that we don't have to do. That will simplify um, our symbols a little bit. All right, now we have to go through and read carefully through the problem and write down the givens in question. Bob moves for five seconds. So there we have five seconds. All right. At a constant velocity, we already said that constant velocity meant that Bob's acceleration was zero and that Bob's initial and final velocities were the same. A constant velocity of three meters per second. Three. I'm going to write down the meters per second. And we've already decided that that's going to be our positive three. That's what's really important, putting in the signs. Positive three meters per second. Starting from rest, now we're talking about Alice. So that tells us that Alice's initial velocity was zero meters per second. Starting from rest, what constant acceleration must Alice maintain? That tells us that we can use standard kinematics for Alice because she's moving at constant acceleration. What constant acceleration must Alice maintain in order to run the same distance as Bob? This is why we don't need subscripts for the displacements. They've told us that Bob's displacement is the same as Alice's displacement. So if two things are different, you can't use the same symbol for them. But if two things are the same, then you should use the same symbol for them. So they told us that they're both running the same displacement, so we can use the same symbol for that. The same distance as Bob in the same time. There's some really important inf information in there in the same time. That means that Alice's time is the same as Bob's time. So we better write a five seconds down here. If you didn't notice that, you won't be able to finish the problem. So we always have to read carefully for all the hidden information. So these two times are the same as well. That is why we could use the same symbol T for both of them. We didn't have to say TA and TB because we know they have the same time. So those two are, symbols are going to be the same. What was the question? Well, the question was what constant acceleration must Alice maintain? So here's the question. The question is asking us here for Alice's acceleration. Okay, so I think now that we have succeeded in writing down um, all the givens and the question here. So it seems like we want to go on to uh, step five and choose equations. Well, of course, the person that we're really interested in here is Alice. So can we directly find Alice's acceleration well, remember that in order to pick an equation for Alice, we would need to know three of the kinematics variables. We can pick a kinematics equation when we know three variables, but we're not ready for that yet because we only know two variables. We know Alice's initial velocity and we know Alice's time, but we need one more number before we can pick an equation for Alice. So we're actually going to have to put Alice off to the side for a second. We can't actually um, pick an equation for Alice yet because we don't have enough information. Uh, what we're going to have to try to do um, is um, figure something out about Bob and then use that for Alice. Um, so is there anything that we can figure out about Bob here? Even though the question isn't about Bob, maybe it would be helpful to figure something out about Bob. Well, remember that Bob is a situation of constant velocity. And as we were just discussing a little bit earlier in the videos, constant velocity is attacked a little bit differently than normal constant acceleration problems. Remember that when you have a constant velocity, you should just think in terms of distance equals rate times time. Displacement equals velocity times time. We've discussed that when you have a constant velocity situation, you don't rely on the standard kinematics equations. Uh, instead, you can just use the simple displacement equals velocity times time equation. And if we just know two of these variables, we can find the third one. Well, we actually do know two of those variables, so we can find the third one. We can find the displacement here. 
And maybe we can already see how knowing the displacement is going to help us, because if we know Bob's displacement, we're also going to know Alice's displacement, right? That will give us the third number that we need about Alice. Uh, we need to find Bob's displacement, that'll tell us Alice's displacement, and then we'll have the three numbers that we need to get an equation about Alice. Let, let's label this then our sub-question. Finding Bob's displacement is our sub-question. It's not the main question, but if we can answer this sub-question, we'll be able to deal with Alice. We're going to take that number and then plug it down here for Alice. Okay, so what should I plug in here for Bob's displacement? Well, we don't know that, so we'll just plug in delta x. And Bob's velocity, we knew, was positive 3. Again, any signed number, we start by putting in parentheses, and then we put in the sign. Uh, and then our time would be 5. Now, even though I'm writing the units up here, I'm still not going to be plugging the units into the equations. Uh, again, if your math skills are strong, it actually would be a good habit for you to plug the uh, units into the equations. But if your math skills are weak, you're probably just going to confuse yourself if you try to plug the units into the equations. So um, uh, for the benefit of those people whose math skills are weak, I'm not going to be plugging the, very, uh, the units into the equations still as we go along. So um, remember that as long as all the units are standard, you don't need to explicitly plug them into the equation, although it can be instructive to do that. It's not strictly necessary. So I won't plug in the units, but we must keep indicating the signs. That's what's really most important. So we get our displacement here is 15. So here's our displacement, but that would not be a good way to write um, that answer to the sub-question. First of all, we should certainly indicate now the units. And the sign, well mathematically this came out to be positive, but we should indicate that. Now did we expect it to come out to be positive? Well yeah, because we know, um, we're imagining that we're moving to the right. Um, so we would imagine that um, our displacement would come out to the right in our positive direction. If this number had come out negative, we would know we made a mistake. All right, so now we know Bob's displacement, positive 15 meters. We can indicate that here. Positive 15 meters. That's the same as Alice's displacement. Both Bob and Alice have a displacement of positive 15 meters. The problem told us that they were moving the same distance. Positive 15 meters, so now I can go back and plug that in here. Positive 15 meters is Bob's displacement. And remember that must be Alice's displacement too. Positive 15 meters. Remember the main reason we figured this out about Bob was so that we could get another number for Alice, because the question was about Alice. Okay, so this gives you an example of how to deal with constant velocity problems. Remember that for constant velocity problems, you're not really going to deal with the standard five kinematics equations. Instead, you can just use the very simple equation, displacement equals velocity times time. And if you know two of these variables, you can find the third. Notice that we didn't actually explicitly plug in the acceleration into this equation. The fact that the acceleration was zero was just what told us that we should use this constant velocity approach in the first place.